Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Microsoft Excel in order to create a mathematical model of this set of data. So I really have no idea at the moment about what this data may look like, what sort of a function may represent it. So the best way to start is a scatter plot, select the data. It's uh, much easier if the X values are in the left column. We insert a scatter plot, and I'll just put uh, dots here. Move that across a bit. That looks good. So it seems like a periodic function, just at a quick glance. Uh, and that's going to be my first attempt at a model. So uh, the standard equation for a periodic function, uh, let me just see if I can add something here to make it easier to, to follow. I'll just put a text box down here and I'll type an equation in the text box. So our standard function is y equals a by the sine of bx plus c plus d. In this model, we have uh, four parameters, a, b, c, and d, and controlling those parameters will change the size, the shape uh, of our function. So that's just to remind me of the model that I'm going to try and use. So I need to set up some uh, cells over here that will store these parameters, A, B, C, and D. And uh, just at the moment, I'll just give them arbitrary values of one. Uh, we'll certainly get a bit better than that in a minute. Um, I'll highlight those in a different color. Uh, so that it's it's clear what we're doing. These are our, our model. Now, in order to uh, uh, oops, in order to check this, we're going to have to use our model to calculate. So the uh, calculation begins with an equals. Uh, I'm pretty much going to type this formula, but instead of the pronumerals a, b, c, and d, uh, I'll click on the cell here. Remember to press the F4 key to add the dollar signs for an absolute reference. Asterisk is multiply sine of B, F4 again. Now when it comes to X, which is our variable, uh, I want to reference the cell here containing the value one. I'm not gonna put dollar signs on this. As I copy this formula downwards, I want the B3 reference to update to B4, B5, and so forth. Now I'm up to adding the value of C, which is stored here. Again, I don't want that one to update. Close the brackets and then add the value of D. Uh, again, so everything with the dollar signs, every reference with the dollar signs are the A, B, C, and D, which are the constants. The A, B, C, and D are the parameters, if you like. We change those to change the shape of our model. Uh, X is a variable, so it's not got dollar signs. And that gives me the value of my model. It's not a very good approximation, but we'll get better in a minute. And that's all of my model. Just highlight those to make them uh, stand out. Now, how am I going to see whether that's a good fit to my raw data? I'll, I'll plot the model. Actually, that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, come over here to the chart. Now, when we go to the <coughs> design tab, uh, select data and I'll add a new data series. So this data series, I'm going to call this my model. The X values are stored here. The Y values are stored here. And there I go. While I'm at it, series number one, let's edit the name of that and call it data. So we have the legend here reflecting what we're doing. I don't really want my model to be drawn as a series of uh, chunky square boxes like that. Uh, so I could try um, a right click here and then format the data series. Now, when I come to the lines, um, currently, they have automatic selection for markers. Then when it comes to lines, there's no line. If I say solid line, it, it gives me this 
pretty horrible curve. I don't really like that. Um, the line style down here, I can choose that the line is smoothed. That's doing a bit better job, uh, but depends on how complicated your model is as to how well that works. Um, I don't, I'm not really enjoying that very much. I don't think I want to do that. So um, do a right click, format again. I'll go back over here to the line style, big part line color, and I'll say no thank you to the line. Um, how do I get a nice smooth line with many, many, many more points attached to it then rather than just the 10 that represents the data values I've got? Well, I'll go over here and I'll make a new column of X and Y values. Uh, now it looks like we're starting from one and going to 10, but I won't go up in steps of one this time. I'll go up in smaller steps. Uh, I want to just copy those until I get to 10. And now I pretty much just want to have that same formula there that I used for the model sitting here. And the reference for the variable is here. I'll just move that across. So my formula reads correctly. Now it's still pointing at I2, I3, I4, and I5, which are the parameters. Uh, do that one. Double click on that little square and it copies them all down. Doesn't particularly need to be shaded in this one. This is more or less going to be out of view uh, from anyone. So over here, what do we do now? Well, we design and select data, and we're going to actually add this as a new data series. The X values are from here. The Y values are here. So it's given me this pretty awful looking uh, thing here with all these green triangles. Definitely want to do a right click and format that data series. Now I don't want those horrible green triangles, but I do want a solid line. I'll check the line style to be smoothed. That's looking better. Uh, I might even make the line a bit thinner because it's not the main focus, I suppose. The line color. Uh, oops solid line. Let's choose the line color to be that same. That's not the same. Well, it's close enough. That's approximately my line color. I think that's the same brown color there. So there is my smooth model. Now, do I really want those squares there? Mm, probably not. So I'll format the data series again. And uh, there it is. I'll take away the squares. So I've now got a model and I've got my raw data. Uh, if I change the values of these, actually I've decided I don't. <coughs> I don't particularly want to have that legend sitting in the corner. If I change the values of these parameters, if I make that 2, well suddenly the model has changed. Uh, if I make that 2, uh, that changes something if I make that two, and if I make that two, it changes as well. So these parameters um, can uh, change the shape. And the game now is to try lots of different values for A, B, C, and D until the model, the uh, brown line, matches the data, which is the little blue diamonds there on the on the screen. We could try this lots and lots and sort of go in circles and get nowhere. So we need a little bit of a, uh, a measurable system, something to, to tell us whether we're getting close or not. And the way we do this is we calculate a thing called a residual. The residual, by definition, is calculated as the data point subtract the model, the value of the model. Uh, and in this case, our data point is 3.7 units higher than the model. Not particularly good. In this case here, our data point is decimal 196 units lower than the model. So that would be that little one right there where the data point is just a bit below the model. 
Now we want these values, these residuals, all to be as close to zero as possible. That would mean we had a good model. You might be tempted to take an average of these things to see if we can get some sort of an average close to zero. The problem with averaging is that the positives and the negatives cancel out. We can actually have a very bad model even with an average of zero. So we usually square the residuals. This makes them all positive. So using formulas, squaring is the little carrot symbol there, meaning power raised to power of two. Didn't want to have that many decimal points. Sometimes Excel has strange ideas about what we want displayed. And these are the squared residuals. Now, they're all positives, so I could average them. But average isn't really what I'm after. I want to make them as close to zero as possible. So I'm just going to add these. Uh, the command is sum, and then I select the range. And I'll put a little note here that this is the sum of the squared residuals to remind myself of what that thing is. Uh, do a bit of highlighting there so I can sort of come back and see that easily. Make it stand out a bit better. There it is. Well, like I said, we could try these things. Uh, it seems my periodic function here would have a, a, an equilibrium value somewhere between 3 and 4. So I'm going to guess 3.5 seems my amplitude is not high enough. Uh, I might guess 3 for amplitude. That's looking about right. I could be a bit low here. Uh, that's pretty close. Now, how's the, uh, how's the frequency? Well, my, peer, my, my model is a complete cycle to here. That's a little bit too low in frequency. I need to reduce this number a bit. What if I put 0.5? Mm, that was a bit much. Let's go 0.75. That's looking close. Uh, if I do this value of C, the phase shift, if I move the change the value of C, I can move the entire model left or right a bit. Uh, so let's try three. No, that wasn't very good. Let's try one. Mm, that's not looking too bad. Notice my residuals now are 12.9, much, much lower than the hundreds that they were originally. So I could keep going like this and get better and better and better. This is certainly not a good model. It's closer than I was. But there is a better way. And that would be using the data tab and the solver add-in here on the analysis. If I want to run solver, I get to set an objective. Now, the cell that I want to set is that cell there. That's the target that I want to get close as possible to zero. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to set that to a minimum value by changing which cells, by changing these four cells here where my parameters are stored. Let's run Solver. Oh, what a nice little sound. It tells me that Solver has converged to a solution. Uh, it gives me the chance to keep these. I will keep these. Uh, you can see that <coughs> Excuse me. You can see there's the values that Solver has produced. So my guesses originally were not too far off. Uh, that's looking like it's a pretty good fit. And there's the sum of the squared residuals, which is very close to zero. There's one final thing that I'd like to do, and that would be to plot a graph of the residual values versus the x values. This is a scatter plot. Now, I'll scrunch that down a bit. And usually we will pop this graph almost directly under the, uh, the one above. And we're, we're looking here to see, well, what are the residuals doing? Is there some sort of a fixed pattern? No, there's not. They seem to be just as many above as below, some higher, some further from zero, some closer, but there's no fixed pattern. They seem quite random, which means I think that this periodic function is quite a good model for what we were looking at with our raw data. It's not perfect. Our data had a little bit of uncertainties. Um, I 
I'm not saying that we're ever going to get an R squared exactly of zero because every set of data in a real experiment will be subject to a little bit of uncertainty of measurement, a little bit of noise in the signal. And so if we can get an R squared close to zero, especially when it visually looks as good as this, and when the residual plot shows no fixed pattern, then we're pretty sure we're onto something for the model. Well, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, happy modeling.